but today is the International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies. That's why we're wearing all blue. It's out following the global community's interest in improving air quality to protect health and well-being, of course. Fortunately, these days, we can now be more aware of air quality. And one way to do this is by using a, an app called Nafas, or breathing in Bahasa. The app helps us to determine the quality of air in our area. And as such, we're able to take preventive measures, even if it's uh, poorly, uh, qu poor quality or over-polluted. Yes, I actually have the app in my hand right now, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and it actually says the rankings of uh, in regards to air quality. It's got the color labels and I know Jakarta, we can definitely be improved, but at least, you know, there's some green spots down there and guess where that is. That's that is my area. Bali. Ah, yes. There you go. <laughs> well, you know what? And this morning we are connected with Nafas's co-developer, Piotr Jakubowski, who will tell us more about the application and how it works and how we can also put it to use on a daily basis. So good morning, Piotr. Good morning, how are sir. you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. So about the air quality in Indonesia, we know that it is not the most ideal at the moment. But really, according to you who get you know, the most recent data um, on an hourly or perhaps a minute basis, how bad is it and what about the air quality here in Jakarta? So in Jakarta, uh, when you take a look at the global rankings, the, uh, the air quality is about four to five times above World Health Organization standards. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, this is a problem for us uh, because everything that we breathe has an impact on our body. So um, one of the things that we're trying to do at Nafas is to bring air quality data to every single neighborhood um, in uh, not just Jabodetabek, but uh, we are in Jogja, we're in Bali, and we're planning to open a couple of new cities this year. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of us are not aware of how uh, poor quality of air and pollution can impact us. Um, mm. As part from just informing uh, those that use the app as to the air quality in their particular area, do you do other things such as conduct campaigns or perhaps through your social media in regards to more inform information regarding air pollution, just so we're more aware of these things around us? So there's actually a couple of things that we do. Um, in the app, we have a very advanced learn section where you can go in and read plenty of different articles about what's going on. Um, we do a lot of content on our social media, um, at Nafas JKT. And, um, and we do partnerships with, uh, with organizations such as Bikara Pugara. Uh, this Thursday, we're actually doing a joint campaign with the University of Chicago to launch the new version of the Air Quality Life Index. Oh, nice. Um, so we, we are really kind of focusing on bringing awareness and bringing attention to the issue uh, because the lack of awareness is, uh, is extremely high. Um, and unfortunately, the impacts of air pollution are also uh, uh, extremely, extremely high too. So we have to balance that out. You know, I am I'm one of those people who are very aware of the impact of the air quality here in Indonesia. I grew up in Vienna where it's close to 0% air pollution. Coming back here, I had asthma almost every single day for almost a year because it was that bad. But what are the areas covered by the app? Because I see there are a lot of different areas, you know, a lot of different cities. Um, and how do you manage to, you know, track all these different locations? Do you have a sensor place in every different of these locations? And do you have plans to extend as well to other cities? Well, we work with a, uh, a technology partner from the EU uh, that provides outdoor sensing technology. And, uh, and we work together with, uh, with, with hundreds of, uh, of volunteers and businesses who Really care about the air quality around them. So, you know, one of our uh, one of our main sponsors is Bank Mandiri. They have been extremely uh, uh, fantastic in terms of uh, helping support the network. And all of that data gets gets plugged into the app and is updated every ten minutes. So, um, so the data that you see in the app is live as of ten minutes ago. And um, and this just allows us to uh, to give people like yourself or uh, or, or others who might be interested in uh, in what the conditions are like now uh, a really really good picture about what the current situation is. 
Okay, so we've had a look and we're taking a look right now as to how to navigate through the app and how the app actually works. It's basically very simple. Yep. You just uh, figure out what area you're in and it will tell you, as you mentioned, in real time what the air quality is like. But what do we do with that information? What are some of the recommendations per se? Uh, I'm in a very unhealthy area. It's a red zone. What are some of the suggestions for us to do in this sort of situation, Peter? So a few a few things. Uh, if you're staying at home, uh, it's it's very uh, uh, recommended to run your purifier inside your house. And the main reason for that is because uh, the level of outdoor air pollution that leaks into our house is actually quite large. Um, the second thing as well is uh, if you're somebody who likes to exercise um, or if you've got kids under under the age of five, um, you should avoid being outside really. Um, one of the things, one of the features, or sorry, two of the features that uh, that, that we really uh, really like are uh, air quality alerts. So you can actually send set an alert for the sensor that's closest to you, and it and it can tell you, you know, every day at a certain time what the air quality is like. So you know, if you run at 6 a.m., you can set your alarm for 6 a.m., and it will tell you, you know, should you go running or not. Um, and the second feature as well is uh, is an exercise alert. So based on a study from the University of Cambridge, um, we can actually uh, determine whether you should reduce your exercise to 90 minutes to 30 minutes or not exercise at all. Uh, and that's an alert that is built into the app. So uh, there's features like like that. Um, we, we created a new feature for uh, uh, for, for COVID for uh, uh, for the pandemic times. It's called the ventilation feature. And, uh, and one of the recommendations for, you know, reducing risk of transmission indoors is to ventilate your house, open the windows, open the doors, and let, let some, you know, outside air in. Uh, so we can t help tell you whether or not it's fresh enough to, uh, to come in. And, you know, it looks, it looks, like, it looks like this. You've got your uh, air quality uh, ventilation alerts that come in and they tell you if it's good, if it's, if it's not good. Um, so it really gives you a great, um, a great guidance to how to live in a city where the pollution is high. Yeah, I was just also looking, you also have recommendations right here in little icons that I really appreciate. Because it's here like uh, for sensitive groups, you wear a mask and lucky us, we're already wearing a mask. You know what, I am one of the people who actually appreciates this pandemic because I get to wear a mask in Indonesia. And it says here, do not close your windows because as you mentioned before, that's probably because the pollution is still pretty high. So you don't want and turn on the air purifier. I think that's really cool. But speaking of air purifiers, right, this is something that I've been uh, before we it, this we started airing, I, I asked you about this is something I'm really, really interested in because the air purifier has become more and more popular during the pandemic. Can you tell us perhaps how the space in a room can affect the performance of an air purifier and how do you determine it? So we actually know which what kind of air purifier to buy if we are looking for one for a specific, a specific room or space. Yeah, so um, one of the one of the important kind of metrics when uh, when looking at air purifiers is uh, what's called clean air delivery rate, uh, so CADR. So the purpose of the air purifier is to take volume of your room and exchange all the air inside uh, through a mechanical process. So when you look at air purifiers today, you'll see, you know, this is for a room that's thirty meters or forty meters or fifty meters. But uh, that doesn't tell the whole story because you know houses in uh, in Indonesia they have different levels of uh, of ceilings and the volume can be different. So um, when you calculate the volume of your room, uh, that gives you an idea of how strong of a purifier that you need. And you multiply that, uh, the number of air changes that you would need. Um, so we've actually uh, Nafas and, and Aria, our sister brand. Mm -hmm. have actually created a calculator for this mm -hmm. um, and you can access the calculator through uh, through our uh, Instagram and, and uh, through some of the content in the app uh, to make it a little bit easier. Uh, the second the, the second thing to keep in mind and, and this is very very simple um, scientists, health professionals, building specialists, they've all recommended that if you want to get a purifier for your house, mm -hmm. get one that only has HEPA technology that doesn't have anything additional, UV ionization or plasma, uh, simply because the science around the efficiency of those technologies is not very clear. 
and in some cases they actually produce uh, secondary pollutants so they don't necessarily make your indoor air cleaner. Yeah, I don't understand the technicality of it all, but I just bought a vacuum cleaner for my house that has a HEPA filter because mm. that's all I've heard about lately. So I'm <laughs> glad I'm on the right track when it comes to that. Now, Peter, I don't know if this is a, a question that uh, you can answer fully or not, but um, now that we're all more aware of the air quality around us, and it seems to me that, uh, you know, uh, for the most part, we're a little bit shocked as to, wow, it turns out our air quality is not that good. What can be done perhaps in the long or short term, in regards to improving air quality around us, especially in the greater Jakarta area and Indonesia in general? Is it a reversible, uh, is it a re reversible thing? Is it something we can do eventually to improve this sort of thing? And can this information be passed along? I, absolutely, it is reversible. Um, we can, all we have to do is look at history. You look at London in the 1950s, if, uh, um, if, if anybody watched The Crown, you remember the, yeah. the episode where there was the big London smog. Mm -hmm. uh, London cleaned up its act over 40, 50 years. Um, so what can we do in the short term is very simple. We can get more and more informed about this, and we can go out and vote for, uh, for, for people in the, uh, uh, in, in the government who care about this issue because um, you know it is something that is affecting our daily lives. It is something that's affecting uh, our health, and it is something that's affecting our um, you know our life expectancy. Yeah. So, um, so in the long term, it is going to take uh, policy and government intervention, and it's really up to us to make sure that um, our people, the people who represent us, um, care as much about air quality as we do. You know. Uh Piotr, this was a very, very uh, informative session and I'm glad that we got to do the special interview with you. Good luck on NAFAS and I'm really, you know, we've been looking at this app since 6 o'clock in the morning and I, I know that it's been, you know, it's it's constantly it's updated, updated it's because it's already different. It's, it's getting already a different. little bit orange now. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's got less green than even before. So, um, so thank you so much. I will definitely be using this app to, you know, because a lot of us perhaps may have some sensitive group friends. So thank you so much for chatting with us on the thank NAFAS you, app. Please. And we hope Thank you very much. to see our continued success and stay healthy. Take care. Thank you for your time. <laughs> stay healthy. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.